Hey, beautiful friends, welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. You know, we talk a lot on the show about websites, SEO, and not having to be on social media to grow our business. But there's one thing that you absolutely have to have if your soulmate clients are going to find you and be able to understand and have complete clarity that you are the one that they are meant to work with. You're the one they should take the initiative to hire and invest in. And that is your copy. A website can look great, but if the copy isn't written well and doesn't resonate, isn't clear, isn't concise, it's not going to do you any good to have a fancy website. So we're going to dive in today to how to write persuasive copy. And if we have time, we may talk about some myths that are associated with copywriting, but we're going to definitely talk about ways that you can start writing more persuasively. Without further ado, Jamie Carocchio, welcome to The Robin Graham Show. Thank you so much, Robin. I'm so excited to be here today. Well, it's always great to see you, Jamie. You have been such, um, I guess I'll say, wealth of information and a huge asset to me in my copywriting. And I am so grateful to have you in my circle, in my community. And I appreciate you immensely. And you are incredibly talented. Thank you. I appreciate that. It makes it easy when I when I work with people and partner with people like you because it it really does take the right. We'll talk about some of this stuff. It takes the right mi- mindset and attitude, and it's um, I'm just feel lucky to be able to do this for for a living and help people with this. So yeah, yeah, it's incredible. The work you do is amazing. So before we dive into our topic of conversation today, will you please tell the listeners a little bit about you and how you got to this point in your journey? Absolutely. It's a, it's an interesting story. So um, I actually, in college, I studied something that really doesn't have anything to do with what I do now, which was English and Spanish. Um, and I was basically fresh out of college uh, with a bachelor's degree in hand. And um, my specialty had been in poetry, creative writing. And I was basically trying to figure out, okay, what do I do with this now? And my husband, um, at that point in time, was doing freelance work. And um, he had a website that he was helping a client with and said, you know, you're a writer, you speak, it happened to be, you know, in both languages, they needed English and Spanish. And he was like, why don't you help me with this? You, you write and you speak both languages. And so I kind of stumbled into writing copy uh, for websites initially, that's where I started. And then um, over time, I basically self-trained for the last, uh, for the first kind of five years of my career and still always self-training, right? I never lifelong learner here. I never, I never think that journey ends. So always looking to to continue that. But essentially I got into these website projects. Then I started helping with more and more types of copy, email campaigns. I had an awesome opportunity to work with um, one of the leading marketing agencies in the space for a few years where I learned a ton and contributed a ton and got to really understand the techniques behind writing persuasively online. And there's a lot of different terms you'll hear out out there. I do consider myself a direct response copywriter, which is much more focused on persuasive copy and conversions, whereas content writing is a little bit different. But this one is very kind of strategic and, and more focused on the persuasive side of things. So over the past almost decade now, I've been really privileged to get to work with coaches and small business owners across industries. I've really have seen so many different industries from executive coaches, um, accountant firms, um, real estate, basically any industry you can think of, even life coaches. I don't do that anymore, but I've, I've seen it and kind of dipped my toe in it. And um, what I learned over the years is that the challenges small business owners face are really the same regardless of industry. Anyone who's trying to make a living and an impact online faces the same challenges when it comes to their copy. And so we'll likely talk more about that. But what I basically did over the past few years was just hone in on that and see where are they struggling the most and and how can I really teach others how to write more effectively in a way that doesn't sacrifice their voice or their personality or their values, right? And so I've just kind of, that's what I've been doing. And now I focus primarily on um, some done for you copy that I write for clients and then, and campaigns, and then also teaching and training and doing copy reviews to optimize. 
Hmm. I love it. And I love that you added to adhere to your values, because I think with the online space, the way it is and how easily people get sucked into, especially on social media, get sucked into comparison and imposter syndrome. Sometimes people lose sight of their values. And if you're not writing copy and you're not building your business on your values, you're not going to connect with and resonate with people that are going to fulfill you when you work with them and keep you happy. So I love that you incorporate that into Mm -hmm. what you're doing. Yeah, that is probably one of the biggest kind of misconceptions I see out there is this thought that like, if I have to sell or or to write persuasively, I have to sacrifice all of that, right? And I always say it's finding the balance. There are techniques and tools and templates we can use and leverage to make our copy more persuasive and convert. But there is always, I always say to clients, and when I share free resources or paid resources around the types of tools or templates I use, I always say, find freedom within the structure. Use what's proven. We're not going to reinvent the wheel, right? There are proven techniques, templates, formulas that we can leverage. And how do we make it our own and make sure that it feels good? Because at the end of the day, if it doesn't feel good, we're either not going to use it or it's not going to work. And so it is really important to find that balance. And um, it's, I think, a lot easier than people think. I think we often just kind of overthink it or um, just get so scared and caught in our own heads about it that we kind of put it off and just avoid it altogether. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. So let's talk about this. Let Because there's so many places that we use copy. Um, we could focus on content creation, but let's For the sake of this interview, we're going to focus on website copy or persuasive copy. We can add the same copy or the same concepts into email marketing, which um, we have other episodes that focus on email marketing and email campaigns. And if we have time, we might dive into that. But for the sake of the majority of this conversation, let's talk about um, and maybe start with the homepage, I guess, and how we write copy that could persuade our viewers, our visitors to our website to actually click book a call or buy? Yes, this is. So I want to preface by saying that the website, when when I've talked to clients over the years for cross industries, from those starting out who have been in the business for years, websites cause like major grief for people. I once heard a business owner tell me that she literally, she literally cried in conversation with me about talking about her experience with trying to get her website updated. And she had been doing it, working on it for seven years. So I share Mm -hmm. that because I think before we go into how to make it effective, I think the biggest piece of advice I can give to people is to start somewhere, create something and don't get hung up on it and feel like it needs to be something that you're constantly tweaking and tinkering with because people can get stuck there and never get out, honestly. Um, So that's the first thing I want to share there. And then we look at, okay, how do we actually go about effectively creating our, our website, the homepage? So when we, when someone lands, a visitor lands on our website, I believe we have about seven seconds for them to make an impression before they either click away, get uninterested or get distracted. So that homepage, primarily what's above the fold, as we'd say, which is essentially the first snapshot that they see on our website before they have to scroll, that is prime real estate, right? Prime virtual real estate. And so that's why one of the things I teach on often is hook headlines. And finding a headline, which is essentially a title, something to grab the reader's attention and show them, especially on the website, it's really important that we leverage in that space who we are talking to, who we are for, and how we can help them. Because if they can't instantly identify that, they might not know that we're for them and we might lose them before they ever got in the door. And one of the big mistakes I see that that a lot of small business or business owners make is leading with their logo or their company name. Yes, you can have your logo at the top in the in the header or on the website, but that's not a headline, right? Your company name, your name is not the headline. That's great. There's a spot where we will spotlight you and talk about you and your credibility and your experience and everything you have to offer, but the homepage should really be focused on the reader and shining the spotlight on them, calling out who they are and how you can help them. So that is one of the biggest opportunities we have and a very relatively simple thing that we can do to make sure that we're attracting the right people and clearly communicating who we can help and how we help them. 
And then if we go down, another kind of best practice on the homepage is I always recommend, if relevant and applicable, to have some sort of opt-in, right? Some sort of free gift or lead magnet, whether it is a white paper, um, a case study, a guide, uh, an ebook, a free training, a webinar, something that they can opt in for. Another big mistake that's made there is, is how many times and how many of us listening maybe are, and I was guilty of this when I first started too, maybe had a generic newsletter sign up on our website, right? Like get the newsletter, sign up for this. Why would I, why would anyone want to sign up for that, right? Unless they know and love us already and know what the goods that we've got behind the scenes, they're not incentivized. And so we always, one of the biggest things in copy, especially persuasive and conversional copy is thinking all the time, what is in it for the reader? What can they get out of this? And how can I communicate in a way that shows them that there's something here for them? And so using a, a very clear and compelling lead magnet, specific lead magnet is always better than a generic opt-in. Um, I always like, there's a few different, there's lots of kind of best practices or options around layout and what to include. The headline I'd say is one of the top ones. The opt-in is an excellent opportunity to kind of start your funnel and get people in who, to start educating and nurturing, right? Because not everyone who lands on our website is ready to buy. Some of them are may know us, may be warmed up and go right to book a call or purchase. And that's fabulous. We want to make sure we have those options for them. But many people are just maybe learning about us for the first time and they need more, right? We need to start that, that relationship. And the opt-in really um, provides an excellent opportunity to do that. I also really like, I'm in a fan of um, speaking in first person on websites. And, and it does depend on your industry and, and how corporate you want to go. But I've seen even large corporations use a more personal and friendly um, tone. And I think that goes a long way too. Um, when it comes to, I always like to have at least an initial blurb. Again, this will depend on how you lay out the design of your website, of course, but somewhere there having um, a picture of who you are, right? If you are the face of your brand, if the person who is going to hire you for your services is going to connect with you personally, have your face on the website, right? Introduce yourself, share some of your story. Don't be afraid to share um, some personal stuff about you, as long as it is relevant to your journey and, and how you help people. If you were once your ideal client, talk about that, right? There's lots of work out there. Um, and I know on the show, you've talked about storytelling before, right? Origin story, talking about where you came from. And then that's an excellent opportunity to weave in, as we were talking about before, our values, what's important to us, right? And what that does is one, it makes the copy a heck of a lot easier to write when we're just writing from our experience naturally, right? It makes it more fun to write. Maybe I'm biased on that one, but I've heard from non-writers and clients that it does make it more entertaining to write and easier. And then also it'll, it's just gonna connect so much more. And it gives us an opportunity, the kind of fourth benefit there is it gives us an opportunity to start pre-qualifying prospects, right? If someone doesn't vibe with who you are or they don't connect with you, or maybe there's a values misalignment, then, then they're not gonna wanna hire you, right? And the opposite is true as well. Your people are gonna see and clearly understand that you're for them. And so that's another thing I'll go on this quick aside just because I think it's really important is oftentimes in our copy, in our marketing in general, we're really, we can be reluctant to, we can, we can try to cast a wide net and think, oh, my service can help everybody. Right. And I want to be able to speak to everybody. I don't want to disclude anybody. And when we do that, we dilute our copy and our messaging and we essentially end up not really talking or resonating with anybody. So the more specific we can get, the better. Maybe we'll talk more about that. There's lots of tips and techniques I have around that too. But what's important from a high level perspective is how can we connect deeper with our clients and how can we do that in a really natural way? And the website homepage, bringing it back, is just the perfect opportunity to do that in a way where it's kind of like this introduction. I like to think of it too as some people might have a physical storefront or office on top of their online presence. Some people might not. The online website, right? Your website is your online storefront, right? So if someone kind of enters the, the door, right? Enters in and they see your website, what's that experience like? Is it is it welcoming and inviting? Are you talking to them as if, you know, they come in every week and you're, you, you already have a connection or is it really cold and stiff and dry? And of course this will depend on who you are and what your personality is. But for the most part, we want it to be warm and engaging, right? And the the homepage, even though it's virtual, it's the same. It's the same idea. Okay, I love everything you said, and I made a couple of notes, of course, because I always 
have to do that or I forget, right? Um, but when you said be the face of your brand, 100%. We know, and I say this so many times, that trust is what determines buying practices. Mm -hmm. If you're not there, if you're not present and people can't see who you are, what you look like, and let's face it, your eyes and your smile are the gateway to your soul. So if yeah. people can't connect with you emotionally, emotionally by seeing you, seeing who you are, even how you dress, like all of that comes into play to be part of the representation of your personal brand, right? The perception that other people have of you. So stand proud and be present on your website yes. so that people can build that emotional connection and then trust um, with you. And then I love how you talked about if you're talking to everyone, you're talking to no one and how our copy really does either attract or repel. And if we write the best way possible, I guess I should say, and I think that starts with our stories and our past experiences, then we're going to be able to connect with and attract those people that we're a good fit for. If you think of it like a magnet, you know, we're, we're here, but then those people out there that are looking for a solution are going to be attracted to us just like a magnet would be, but then they're going to yeah. repel if it can see through our copy, and this is where clarity is so important, having clarity around your messaging, clarity around what you do, who you serve, how you do it, why you do it, so that then those people that aren't a good fit recognize that right away, and they don't waste your time with a discovery call. They don't waste your time by coming into your life and your community and then draining you because they aren't a good fit. That actually, with you saying that, Robin, something I highly recommend for those listening who this is applicable for, which I imagine is many of you, especially service providers, right, is having an application for your sales calls. It can be very short and simple, and this might not seem related to copy. It is a bit, it's kind of copy and business, but it is one of the best ways we can also pre-qualify and not waste time on a call. And it's something that I've seen then less people than you'd think have it in place. Um, so that is something that we can do right off the bat when someone lands. And that's part of our website too, right? When they click to book a call. Um, but you're absolutely right. And I think there's this idea that, you know, we don't, playing it safe in our copy is a surefire way to kind of get lost in the crowd of, in the sea of everybody trying to get everybody's attention, right? And there's a technique I like to use that I, even as a professional copywriter who's been doing this for almost over a decade now, I still invoke when I'm sitting down to write copy, is I always try to think about one specific person. Um, now, of course, depending on, I write copy for myself and for lots of clients. So I have a lot of hats I get to take on and take off. Um, and depending on the, you know, it could be for one client, knowing their ideal client, I might be thinking of, someone as if, you know, my best friend who's their, their, that kind of avatar. And I'll literally sit down and write an email that will potentially go out to hundreds or thousands of people. And I'm writing it as if it's going to my friend, Allie. And I sit down and say, how would I write this to Allie? Because that helps us break that barrier of thinking, oh, how am I going to say this for my list of 2000 subscribers? Like, how is this going to resonate? Right. And we kind of start to get stiff and, and concerned and we can drop into fear around how we're going to be perceived or just kind of draw a blank on what do I say? Or we start sound like we sound nothing like we would on a conversation with a, with a client or even a friend. Um, and it just, we get really stiff. And so I, I find that that really helps break down that barrier and say, okay, this is a conversation like we are today, right? This is a podcast. We're having a conversation about something and it, it just, it flows better. It has, it's more natural and ultimately it's going to be more effective, right? Cause you're going to feel good about it and you're going to connect. And with that too, there's another thing. I think we often, there was something else I was going to share around that. I might have to come back to it. This, oh, I got it. The other technique that's similar to that is imagining that you're sitting at a, a bar or cafe, whatever's most appropriate for your clientele, having a drink or a coffee with a prospective client or with a client, right? How would you talk to them? How would you say the things that you want to say? And then channel that when you sit down to write your copy. Think about that client. Think about that person. It's the same idea, right? Just kind of putting your, kind of taking, almost imagining your physical body in another space and then allowing yourself to flow through that or having, you know, imagining another person being in front of you. And it becomes a lot less weird when we're talking to someone than kind of just sitting in front of a, a white screen, right? <laughs> trying to mm -hmm. trying to make something sound good or make sense. So that can be a helpful way to, to, to breach that. I think that, it triggers um, 
an emotion within you. So as you're writing, you're, you're writing from an emotional perspective, mm -hmm. that's going to be more likely to connect with someone else versus just sitting down with no emotion and coming across either abrupt or flat or not ready to, and willing to connect with other people. Exactly. And another important thing too, that I think happens there is especially when we're talking about, I know, so we're talking about websites, right? Where it's more con conversional. Um, so even writing it on our website copy, right? We might think, okay, I'm like in sales mode. I have to sell this thing. And oftentimes another thing that comes up for us is we think, we're being braggish or um, pretentious maybe, or it's like, it's making it too much about ourselves and good copy actually does the opposite. And it takes the, it, it speaks to who your ideal client is really shines a spotlight on them, shows them that you understand what they're going through. So that kind of takes the pressure off it having to be about you and your accolades, which of course in your about section, for example, in your bio, we're going to, you know, spotlight all of those things really showcase them. Cause that is important, an important part of selling yourself online. But that's not necessarily what we lead with. What we lead with is showing our ideal client, our soulmate client, right, that that we understand what they're going through. And I think the the pains and desires and really understanding that, that's another thing that I don't think enough of us spend time, invest time in understanding and then being able to translate into the copy. So I know I'm kind of going into a different topic there, but I think it's an important one that comes up um, really often. And that's really fundamental for our website copy, too. Well, absolutely. And I really don't think it's far-fetched at all because if we don't understand their pain points and demonstrate through our copy that we understand their pain points, they're not going to resonate with us. And it makes me think of Dale Carnegie, Dale Carnegie's book, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And yeah. in one of his suggestions is, um, and this is going to lead me to a question, but one of his his suggestions is to get the yes, yes, because then you, you've you already shown them that, yes, you get them. Yes, you understand. You know, yes, you have a solution. Um, but that brings me to those questions. Do, how many questions do we pose? And is it more of, and I know you helped me with this, where it's, um, are you feeling or are you experiencing? And then what if instead you could? And it's like a list of a few items where you really show them, you understand the pain points. What is dragging them down? What is it that is causing them so much stress and anxiety as they're going through the motions of the day that you have a solution for? And then what is that feeling they could have if they experienced that with you through your services? Yes. Yeah. Was there a specific question that you wanted to ask? Yeah. Me? It's like how many, I guess, what questions or are there certain hmm. questions or how many questions? I guess both of those questions. Um, that's a lot of questions here, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got it. Okay. Yeah. Great, great questions around questions. So yeah. a few things here. Um Kind of taking a step back before we can actually write the copy for our website, right? It's looking at our messaging. So when I talk about messaging, I'm always really referring to three things. Positioning, how we position ourselves in the market, right? And this is where our credibility, our expertise, our experience, clients, results, all of that comes into play. Our ideal client, so pains and desires, you'll hear this referred to as many different things, motivators, fears, all of that kind of comes into play. But I like to keep it succinct with pains and desires, they kind of always come back to those. And then our offer and really positioning our offer from a perspective of how does our offer solve a specific problem, urgent problem for our clients. And so when we, one of my biggest recommendations and, and the part of the process I, I run through when I partner with someone to help them with their marketing and their copy online is this is the very first step, dialing in your messaging. We do something, one of the things I like to do is what I call messaging guide, where we just really dive into those three, do a deep dive into those three areas and the reason I do that, and I actually, before I made that a service that I offer, I would kind of do that intrinsically on the back end it, as part of my process, even if clients didn't hire me for it, because it made my job so much easier. And it was kind of like, if I didn't have that as a foundation, it was really hard to create anything else. Because what happens, and most of us who are listening, who maybe don't have a messaging guide, or maybe haven't dialed in, maybe we have an idea of who our ideal client is and the offer, but it's it's currently the one we talk about it, it's not really compelling, or it's just not converting people, then 
oftentimes what happens is we create copy from a place of like, we, we start from scratch all the time, right? We're constantly thinking, oh, what is it that my client's actually dealing with versus having it written down where I can say, okay, let me reference back. And I do this, I do this for myself and for all of my clients, right? So you can imagine how many times I'm referencing just to keep track of everybody and make sure I'm writing for the right person. And even if it's just you and your business, it is it just makes things so much easier. And so once you have that initial core messaging down, then it's like, okay, how do we write our copy? And the great thing about doing that previous kind of pre-work is you're creating the foundation for all of your marketing assets. And so when you sit down to write your web copy or to write, you know, um, is this you? Does this sound familiar? Are you experiencing or feeling any of the following that you were talking about, Robin? You can actually just kind of copy and paste from your messaging guide, right? And maybe you can elaborate a little more. The more specific you can get, the more. Something I like to do there is um, a lot. oftentimes I'll see clients write things like, are you struggling in your business? No, that's a good first step. But what does that look like? Someone, a, you know, a part-time um, you know, a stay-at-home mom who's starting her business with little kids running around the house is not going to have the same pains as um, a woman who's been in corporate for, you know, 20 years and is, is transitioning to coaching business or a man who's doing, you know, there's all these different things. And so we want to get really specific. Who is your ideal client and what is her or his very specific top? I like to stick to a top three pains and desires. So to answer your question, the number of questions, I'll give a guideline, at least three. I like to do the sweet spot I found is three to five of those like one liners, you know, do, do you resonate with this three for three to five for each section, right? If we're talking about what they're where they're currently at and what they're struggling or, you know, imagine this where we kind of flip it to the desires. I would do three to five. When we do more than that, it kind of it can get a little lengthy to read. It's not to say that we cannot if they're really compelling and we know why our ideal client or maybe we have a few different avatars that we're speaking to, which can get tricky. But sometimes, you know, if, even if it's just three cases, right, someone starting their business, scaling or or um, maybe pivoting or something like that. And even just listing those three bullets out on your website Someone who's reading, if they identify with one of those or all of them, right, they're going to instantly know they're in the right place. And that's what that's really what the purpose that serves of writing those questions. And they can be in question format. You know, um, are you tired of thinking I'm never going to get anywhere with my business or, um, you know, or you just state them as statement facts. So, you know, you're exhausted working till 10 p.m. every night and 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 sun, working Sundays and wish you had more time to, you know, go to your dan daughter's dance recital or whatever it might be. Right. We want to get specific and we want to either do it in question or statement form. And to keep it um, relatively concise, I would say three to five is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. And you helped me narrow that down too, which was was you had a lot of great helpful. ones, but it was a lot. So it was like, how yeah, do we you know, exactly. take it more? How do we talk? Yeah. You know, speak to who we want to speak to in in the um, in the most concise and compelling way possible. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now, how much do we? Because you talked about um, you know writing in first person. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about letting the people know right away these three to five points and questions um what's next like we've given them the header to attract them to let them know they're in the right place we've given them the opportunity to download a free resource mm -hmm. and now we've connected with them and let them know that we understand their pain points and here's how we can help solve them what's next in terms of writing so that we can really bring them in and continue to persuade them to work with us? Great question. So yes, we've drawn them, gotten their attention, grabbed their attention through the hook headline. We've shared something valuable and for free. We've hit on those pains and desires. Then we get to the point where we introduce our offer. This is a really big opportunity to highlight another technique that we use in copywriting is benefit statements, right? So really highlighting the benefits of our program. Again, kind of that's what's in it for the reader. What oftentimes happens is we focus on features. Features can be things like, so even if you're a service provider, if you offer, you know, X number of calls, or if you have um, your clients get access to an online learning learning platform where they get, you know, 27 video trainings and 15 worksheets, those are all features, right? And what often happens, what oftentimes happens is we put so much time, energy, and money into creating those things and being able to offer them that we lead with those things in our copy. And that's a big mistake because 
unless someone knows the value, the intrinsic value inside of that, they're not going to be, they're not going to understand why they should care about that. And so instead of focusing on the features, we look at what are the benefits. And when we think about benefits, the way I like to simplify it and make it a little bit more tangible is what is the positive experience our ideal clients are going to have by getting access to that online, by the, getting access to those features, right? The calls, the online portal, um, you know, the consultation, whatever it is, and focus on that. Lead with that in our copy. The rest will come. And of course, before you sign contracts and things like that, they'll want to know the exact deliverables and there's a time and place for that. But if we lead with that in our marketing, we kind of lose people and lose interest before, you know, before they had an opportunity to actually understand that we can help them. And so I think when we look at the offer, it's looking at how can I really position this offer to solve, it'd be a solution, right? And it's, again, it's not about me. It's not about my offer. It's about helping them with their problem and solving that problem. And we're not for everybody, right? So we're not shoving it down anybody's throats. We're saying, this is the solution we've created. We understand you're ha you have this problem. This is the solution we've created to help you. Here's what it looks like. Here's how it will help you. And really highlighting those benefits. That would be the next step. Yes, I was muted because the dogs were barking. Um, <laughs> it's active outside today with the squirrels. <laughs> um so okay what's next after that great after i love the whole concept of the benefit statement and yeah as i'm sitting here i'm like okay i think mine's right but i have to go back and review this again like it seems like i'm i'm kind of like that person that said oh it's the seven-year website we're constantly going <laughs> in and finessing um but i do like to make sure that and i think it is important especially if you've had your website for any length of time make sure that it is up to date because sometimes we forget and a link could be wrong or you know maybe you've made a change or maybe you know you're linking to another page but that url shifted so there's so many different things that we can go in and do a health check but yeah. i love this this concept of the writing the copy and then being able to just kind of step away and letting it coast and be um, the thing that works for you and you just let that ride. Yeah. And I think that's an important distinction. Our messaging, our copy is something that is always evolving. And exactly like you said, that health check, it, there will be updates to our ideal client, to our offer, to our story, right? To our, everything. And it is important to keep that updated. I think that it's also equally important to not get stuck on perfecting something. So I yes. think that that's, that's an important distinction. But then after that, after we, we've kind of highlighted the um, value in our, or, in our offer, the next step would be looking at social proof. So I think most business owners, when they think about social proof, they think about testimonials or maybe case studies and testimonials can be in the written or video format. And that, of course, is part of social proof. And I think a lot of people kind of post that on their website in one section or at the bottom. That That's a great thing to include on the, the homepage. Again, going back to the homepage, definitely want to, if you don't have that, include some testimonials on the homepage, even if it's close to the bottom. Um, but really any time in our copy where we're getting close to making an invitation or um, having a specific call to action, an action that we want the reader to take, we can really tee that up and strengthen that call to action, which I'm jumping the gun there, but that's going to be the next step after social proof. And we can talk about a few tips for that too. But really the before that is social proof. So, okay, you, you've showed me that you understand my problem. If I'm your ideal client, you've showed me that you understand my problem, you're offering a solution. And now I want to see that the solution works, right? That other people have tried and tested it and that you've been able to get people results. And so social proof can really establish that. And it can look like video testimonials, written testimonials. It can look like um, case mini case studies where you talk about what they came in with their challenges, the, you know how you help them, and then the specific results they got. It can also look like highlighting your credibility and you know if you've been in the business for um you know several decades or 10 years anything over like seven ten years is is automatically sounds great right it shows that you have a a track record um so really highlighting that in your copy too right or you know how many five stars reviews you have if, if it's somewhere else on the internet that you have that or if you've had been awarded um any sort of if you have any awards that you've been given or um been spotlighted on any stages, given had any features in any prominent magazines, all of that is part of your kind of social proof and credibility. And so we want to make sure that we highlight that on the website and in our marketing in general. I think oftentimes we put the testimonials on the website, but then we forget to share those things often and consistently in our ongoing marketing. Hmm. 
I love that. It's like the humble brag, right? You're not yes. putting it out there to be pretentious, but it is important that people see your credibility and your authority. Exactly. And there's a big difference between, so even on your website, right? If I landed on your website and the first thing I see is like, look at these amazing results that we got clients, I'd be missing context, right? But because we followed this kind of a persuasive and, and strategic structure of meeting them where they're at, letting them know that we see and understand them, and then kind of delivering a solution and then backing it up. It all just flows and it, it makes, it helps the logical side of the brain. So all buying decisions ultimately are emotional, right? Later, there's the logic side of the brain that comes in to justify our purchase and why we did that, right? But the initial impulse is almost always emotional. And so that is really important. And so we connect with them emotionally through that headline. And then later we want to show them that this buying decision is an intelligent one. And that's where the social proof comes into play. Yeah, I love that. Okay. You mentioned CTAs and before you even, before we even got to CTAs, I wanted to ask you a question because I think this is, this happens a lot where people have multiple CTAs on their homepage yeah. and it confuses people and they're like, what do they want me to do? So <laughs> let's talk about CTAs and how we can, um, standardize per se, um, make them more concise, more clear and simplify the CTAs for the viewer? Yeah, this is, this is a great question. This is something that I either see folks not including any CTA, which is a big no, no, or including too many, like you said, which is just confusing and also a no, no. So where's, what's the sweet spot, right? If we're thinking about the website, the homepage, again, will depend on how you structure it. One of my kind of go-to structures is Kind of like um, if you look at if you scroll down on the home page of the website, you have almost like an introductory section that takes you to other places. The home page can have it is OK for the home page to have a couple different CTAs. But before you decide which ones, you have to decide what the goal of your website is. And there may be several goals that you have, but you have to decide on priority for some people. The goal is ultimately everyone's goal is going to get to be get to get hired, right? Everyone wants, you know, book the call or hire, purchase our services. But are we also looking at trying to build our following, build our email list, right? That's where that opt-in comes into play. So oftentimes if someone is ready to buy, when they land on your website, they will go to the contact or to the schedule a call button, right? If they're not, those people we want to capture in the opt-in and say, okay, you need more information. Here's here's some education, here's how we can show you that we can help you and understand where you're at and all of that. And so the, the main call to action really should be that opt-in for many of us. And then there absolutely later on the page can be a section or a part, a button that takes them to schedule the call. But the schedule of the call, very few people are gonna do that as soon as they land on your website. And the ones that will, will go to that in the menu. So I don't, my personal and, and kind of professional opinion around that is, to focus, if, if your goal is to build your email list and offer value, build relationships, make sure you have that opt-in CTA. Make sure you have, if you have a very simple menu, that's another big mistake I see is, is folks having really crazy menus with like all these different options and, you know, make sure that's clean and neat and just the essentials of what people need. Usually we're looking at homepage uh, about services, contact, like so it might be a few more blog or something like that, but keep it as simple as you can to avoid creating confusion. Um, and then, so when we look at the other pages of your, your website, there's also an opportunity on, I would say every page should have one main call to action. The homepage may have two or three. If we're thinking about a blog or something like that, that's okay too. That I would kind of bundle into the free resources and value and education. So I don't think that's bad. As long as you have on the homepage, when you have several call to actions, it's looking at how can I make it really clear what each one of these things are? So if it is the opt-in, we've got, you know, sign up for, for the specific resource, they can sign up for it. Um, if it's check out our blog, if then you have like a preview of what your last three articles are, right? The right person, if they're going to see if it's interesting to them or relevant, they'll click on the right article, right? Or, you know, need help with this, check out our services page. So I like the homepage can often be kind of a s initial intro page that leads you to other pages on the website. That being said, we don't want you know, buy my book, listen to the podcast, read the blog, uh, you know, download this opt-in, um, contact us here, right? That's just, that's going to get crazy. So if you can narrow it down, I would say to two to three tops for the homepage. And then on every other page, you should basically be sending them back to, um, to the book a call page. So when they're on your about, you can educate, share your story, share who you're about, your professional bio, and at the end say interested in partnering and send them to the book a call page, right? To the contact page. 
And same thing on your services. The services page, the main call to action is going to be for them to pick up the phone and call you. Or if it's a direct purchase, a direct purchase. Yeah, that I love. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I love that. And um, okay, this is awesome. And I think that one one other thing that can happen as far as it's kind of a CTA is, you know, if you're, when you have your benefit section, you mm -hmm. can guide them to and you can hyperlink them to your services page so they can learn more. And that Absolutely. is, I, I kind of think of that as like a soft CTA mm -hmm. because you're giving them that direction to go there. So they have the option to learn more, but you're not actually saying, here's what to do next. So yes. I, yeah. So that's another yeah, that's way. a great way to leverage the, yeah, the hyperlinks mm -hmm. strategically yeah. placed. And whoever, if someone's interested, they'll click on it, right? That's, mm -hmm. I think, a big missed opportunity for a lot of folks too. They don't think to do that. And it, it can it can lead people to the right place. Yeah, absolutely. Because sometimes there's just not enough information for someone to make a decision. Do I want to take this further? And you don't want to bombard them, obviously. Um, but you do want to encourage them that if they want more, they can easily find more. Exactly. Yeah. Jamie, I feel like we could have multiple conversations about this. Like, you know, well, there's a lot and you could go deep yeah. into each one too. Yeah. To each page. And so maybe what we'll do is, is a series. We'll have you come back and we'll hit the about page and the services page. We'll make a mini series out of this because oh, there's, so, yeah. there's so much information. And I think we did, a you did a really great job of breaking down the homepage. So mm -hmm. Listeners, I encourage you to go to your homepage and really look at your format and look at some of the suggestions Jamie made, especially look at that header or the, you know, the, the very top, the banner and see what your hook is. And here's the thing. I want to encourage you because everything Jamie said is so powerful, but then you can multiply that power by adding SEO to it. So what is your keyword or key, rate, key phrase for your homepage? And is it in that hook headline? And is it throughout the rest of your page so that what you want to be known for is evident? Because the more people see that this is exactly what you want to be known for, the more Google's going to send people to you to even view your now persuasive copy. But also it helps the reader see that, oh, okay. I've seen this word or phrase three times. I know that this is what this person does. This is their expertise. So keep that in mind too, as you're writing your copy or revising your homepage. And if you are interested, there is on the website, there is a free resource, uh, intro to SEO for small business owners and entrepreneurs that you can download and watch that because it will guide you on how to write for SEO on your homepage or any other page on your site. And I'll also link uh, another episode of the show where I talked all about writing content and copy for SEO on your website. So I'll link those two resources for you in the show notes. Jamie, how can the listeners learn more from you, connect with you, and maybe even work with you? Yes. So um, the main platform I am on is LinkedIn under my name, Jamie Crocio, which maybe we can write out for everybody so they don't have to guess how to, yes. how to spell yes. that. And um, I also have a um, a free download. Base, it's not a download, actually. It is my coffee, my free coffee and copy tips. And it is basically where I've compiled all of my best techniques and tips and templates. And it is um, delivered in really succinct emails. And the whole intention is to help you write copy in just five minutes a day, more persuasive copy in just five minutes a day. So I share all of my best tips through there. And it's coffee, um, coffeeandcopytips.com. And completely free. You can unsubscribe anytime. And that would be the best way that and LinkedIn to connect. Awesome. I love it so much. Jamie, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Robin, and all the listeners. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much. Listeners, if you did find this helpful, you know what I'm going to ask. Please leave us a rating and review because that is how I get more incredible guests like Jamie and how we reach more people to help others grow their businesses too with more simplicity, ease and grace, less stress, less anxiety. And we can kind of squash that fear and doubt that's so often associated with growing a business, especially when we're doing it as solopreneurs and don't have a lot of resources to build us up on the day in, day out. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all of you and I will see you all next time.